everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Karina and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to give an intro for you guys, another intro in July, for a fantastic ladies project. You have seen me do a lot of fantastic ladies collaborations on this channel so far. Some of them finished, a lot of them still ongoing. And this is the big one. Well, not the big one, but it's a pretty massive project because this it's Throwback 30. Throwback 30 was created by Jessica Lee because she wanted to partake in all of the projects, but as the Fantastic Ladies grew, so did their number of projects, and it grew to a point where it's not feasible to do absolutely every single project. So this project is designed for those who want to dabble, who want to play in every project, get a little bit of exposure to it, but then not have to commit to the full project. This project is also kind of like a halfway, more or less through the year project. It starts at the end of July and runs for a full year, which very exciting because then again, you don't have all the finales happening in December because there's going to be a lot of those coming on my channel. Subscribe, stay tuned. So I'm not going to go into full details about all of the projects that are involved this year. Each year, of course, the Fantastic Ladies vote, and the ones that get the most votes are the ones that are gonna be pulled in. There are, of course, more than just the 30 that are gonna be featured in today's video. Of course, if you are a Fantastic Lady, you have all of the information in the Facebook group. Otherwise, I recommend checking out the individual projects that, of course, all are all over YouTube. What I'm going to do in my intro today, and of course I do have a massive list down in the description box down below, feel free to check that out. We're going to go through what the project is, the prompt that I have chosen for that project, um, the item that I have rolled in, and as I talk about each item, I'm also going to give you a little bit behind the scenes as well of how I'm going to be using it or at what point, because this is a year-long project, I am rolling things in in this project that do conflict with other projects. But again, as another project finishes or another item gets used up, then I'll use these and I'll let you kind of know the behind the scenes what I'm planning for that as well. And because it is a year long project, that is also in the back of my mind as I picked out these items. So I've kind of picked them out for a little while already, kind of still kind of play with them, kind of sit. I've exchanged a couple out here or there. But without further ado, let's get into this absolutely massive project. Where we're going to start the classics 50 shades of whatever color the fantastic ladies have voted on for that year. Um, 50 shades is a project I would love to do, except it is 50 items of a particular color and I do feel like that would conflict too much with my other projects. So I am glad to be able to sample them at least a little bit here. And we are gonna start off with 50 Shades of Green. We're just gonna go in the order of the list on the Facebook group. Of course, 50 Shades of Green, 50 items with green in the name, the packaging, the color of the product itself. As long as green is shown somewhere, then it counts. Uh, I have a lot of green eyeliners, and you've kind of seen a little bit with one of them more recently, and this is Pantasy. Um, but I've actually chosen to bring in one of my liquid green eyeliners. Uh, this comes to us from Lancome. This is the Art Liner 24 Hour. Uh, this is their, what is this? The Bold Color Precision Eyeliner. Um, this color, oh my gosh, it is so beautiful. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of this kind of applicator, right? The Quo Beauty one in Espresso or in, uh, what was it, Violet? Oops, there we go. A little bit of a swatch for you guys accidentally there. Um, that liner I prefer much more, but this is actually fairly easy to work with. And I'm anticipating fall for this. I'm very excited about having this. And it is obviously still a little bit on that colorful side that tiny little swatch, but it is more neutral. You can get away with it more every day. And the few times I have worn this, I've been obsessed with the eyeliner. Like it stays, it doesn't move. It is beautiful. I'm excited to play with this. As you guys will see, I have a variety of project goals that I want to meet for this project. So some of them are usage goals. Some of them are hitting pan. Majority though are use it up or finish goals. 
Liquid liners, as I'm discovering with my other projects, they're not the most fun tracking wise. So what I'm gonna actually do for this one is 30 uses on it. Because of course it's throwback 30, so 30 only seems natural, which is a lot for an eyeliner. That is the highest usage goal that I am setting in a project, but I think I think it'll be okay because again, this is this is fun. This is very exciting. Next up was 50 shades of pink, which was the first color the Fantastic Ladies did. And so I'm going with something very pink. And for those of you who have been watching Partners in Cream and are wondering about the continuation of the Cream Blush Saga, this is the project. And we're gonna start it off here. From BoxyCharm, the Natasha Denona Cupid Cheek Duo, which has a, ugh, talking, which has a cream blush, and a highlighter in there. Now with these kinds of duo products, my intention is to use them together. And every time I use them together, that will count as a use. You can see there's definitely a little bit of movement, at least on that cream blush side. Maybe you can see stuff in the highlighter. They've always been used together. But this is gonna be my pink product for 50 Shades of Pink. The goal for this, it's a good thing this is a year-long project. I want to hit pan on both sides. We'll see if I can do it. I don't know if I can, but that is going to be the goal. I anticipate this is going to be more of a focus a little bit later on after Graveyard Project Pan has ended because, of course, as you guys know, the Physician's Formula Butter Palette is in there, which has brush, brush, blush. The Physicians Formula Butter Glow Palette has a blush, bronzer, and highlight in there. It's got more, multiple, two of each. Um, so this is gonna be more of a focus after that project ends because I do wanna play with that palette, especially because I have my summer coloring right now. Next up, my favorite color. It is 50 Shades of Purple. Um, obviously, purple packaging, product, whatever. I have opted to go for one of these. Now, Bath & Body Works, this is their body cream. This particular one is in Sunset Glow, and you guys can see all of the purple all over this wonderful package here. And, oh, it smells so good. It smells so good, you guys. Sunset Glow, of course, it's got notes of Fresh Coconut, Sparkling Cherry Seltzer, Dreamy Moonflower, and Caramelized Vanilla. Oh, that smells nice. And again, because it is more vanilla-y, coconut-y, like it should still be fine for all year. Now, those of you who are caught up on the Ready, Set, Pan Instagram, you guys know that in July I had posted a picture of the 2020 body creams that I wanted to prioritize, which this one was not in that picture but they didn't have any purple in any of those seven body creams. So rolling to this one, this one is a 2021, so that would be in the next batch I really wanna focus on. So I'm just gonna bring this one in now. Next up, we have the current project that is running the 50 Shades of Yellow slash Gold. Um, and this project almost could have turned into 50 shades of yellow slash gold. There's a lot of yellow and gold. I have been working on this gold eyeliner here from Pixie. This is their Endless Silky Pencil in 24 karat. Um, it is getting smaller, which is fantastic. It is not my favorite in the waterline, but especially for summer, I have been really trying to work this one down. Obviously, packaging's gold. The color of the product is gold. I only use it on my waterline, so that is a very small area. But I'm hoping to get this one finished. And again, this one should hopefully be used before the end of this year is the plan. Next up is Beauty A to Z, which is a project I am doing right now. So do feel free to check out that playlist. Of course, the whole thing with this project is for every letter of the alphabet from A to Z, you have a product associated with it that you have some kind of panning goal attached to. Usage, hitting pan, using it up. Um, I had done a random letter generator and the random letter that I got was R. And so for R, I have decided to pull in a mascara. And I'm pulling it into this project because mascaras 
I mean, you might be interested to know what mascara I'm using, but it's really difficult from a tracking panning perspective besides either weights, which move so slowly with mascara, and I don't do weights on my channel, or through tracking usage. This one, of course, it's still in the box, came to me via BoxyCharm fairly recently. I think this was like February or so, which I guess isn't that recent anymore, from Benefit, their real mascara. Um, this is their magnet version, and the real is where I'm getting my R in from. Um, as you guys can see, it's in the box. It is unopened. This is, of course, what the mascara looks like, so you guys can kind of take a look at it. But I am not going to be using this mascara yet because, spoiler, I have another mascara that I've rolled into the project and that's one I am currently using. So stay tuned. This will be eventually. Budget beauty. So, of course, what is more affordable, budget friendly for you? And, of course, that's a very subjective thing. So I approach this one coming from the drugstore perspective. And this is something that you would have seen added into my plan to pan for 2023. That, of course, is this little guy here. It also would have worked for R and Beauty A to Z. Um, the Remmel. This is their Wonder Cloud All Day wear soft shadow and when they say soft they mean it um this is a very light purple so it also could have worked for 50 shades of purple and how i tend to use this one is more as a base um, i have been using an eyeshadow primer for the last while this would do the same purpose and as you guys can see there is some windowing in there so the goal is to finish i haven't been telling you goals very much for the last little while basically since uh, starting from 50 shades to purple to now, I want to finish all of these. Um, the stopper is still in here, so we're probably got quite a way to go on this one. So we'll see. We'll integrate this one in the routine, see how it goes. Child of the 80s. Uh, so the 80s was before my time. I'm a 90s baby. Um, so there was a whole bunch of 80s associated prompts. And the one I chose, because I've been going through, kind of picking out my favorites or the ones that resonate most with me, um, I went with the prompt Princess Bride, because that is a fantastic movie, especially the first half of it. And that prompt is associated with a product that you love. So I have picked an item that I have enjoyed playing with. You've seen this already in This Is Fantasy. Um, I hit my goal there. Now I want to hit a new goal on this one. And this is the classic, the famous, the iconic NARS Blush and Orgasm. Uh, my goal now, and of course you've seen this before on my channel, I want to hit pan now. So I feel like there's probably quite a ways to go to hit that goal. But that's what I'm going to be reaching for because this is a year-long project and I have enjoyed playing with this blush. So, now again, powder blush is there in Physicians Formula Butter Palette. So this and other blushes that I'm going to roll in later, you'll see. Um, these will become more of a focus after Graveyard Project Pan has ended. Next project is Color Pan, which is a project I've never really been interested in because the purpose of that project is to use up your ColourPop and your Fourth Ray, your Soul products, so anything related to the ColourPop brand and their sister brands. And I don't own anything from ColourPop. Um, I hate paying for shipping, and I do want to see products in person before I purchase them. So. I don't own anything. So I had asked one of the moderators of the Fantastic Ladies what I could do instead. And so the prompt that she had given me, because the whole purpose of Color Pan was because a lot of people owned a lot of ColourPop, and ColourPop can go a little bit faster on some of their items. So the kind of revised prompt is a brand that you have a lot of, which gives me a lot more possibilities. Um, and I opted for this one to go with another favorite because I have a glow recipe in my projects. This one is the Plum Plump Hyaluronic Cream. You guys have seen me. I am currently panning the serum that goes along with this moisturizer in my Skin Is In project, another Fantastic Ladies collaboration. This is completely untouched. So there's the seal still on it. Oh, cracking that open. Yeah, it's got a little bit more of a scent, a bit of an air bubble. 
a lot of air bubble, but that is my moisturizer. I do have a lot of moisturizers going on in projects right now, so it's probably going to be a while till I get to this one, but that's okay. Again, it's a year long project. Uh, 15 milliliters and this sample size based on finish seven by spring, drop 10 by summer, take me forever to go through. So when I eventually get to actually using it, it'll still be in the project for quite a while. Next up is a kind of unique project because it has a lot of double prompts in it. Uh, Day of the Dead. And so a whole bunch of different colors and other associated prompts associated with it. I picked orange. And this one I kind of picked more based on the prompt description rather than the prompt itself. Um, so two things that I have to meet for Day of the Dead. Um, so the first thing associated with orange is I have to use an item that is either orange packaging, orange color, orange name, etc. Right? So it makes sense. So what I've chosen is a little box of these. Um, Dr. Dennis Gross, the Alpha Beta Universal Daily Peel. There are three treatments in this box. You've seen me use up the red one. That's been featured in an empties video previously, but I have not touched the orange. I am not sure if there's a difference, but we'll find out, I guess. So we got three treatments here. Um, and these do expire in June of next year, so before the project ends. Uh, this, we got, again, a two treatment step in there. Now, the problem is um, these may not get touched for a little while because um, I have just replaced my item in Beauty A to Z for X, so I'm using the Exfolicate, which is again, an intensive kind of treatment thing, kind of doing something somewhat similar, except this is chemical, that's more physical. And I have the Glam Glow Mask, the exfoliating youth mud stimulating treatment, which again, kind of doing something similar. So these might be a next year kind of priority. We'll kind of see how it goes. The second item associated, because again, double prompts with Day of the Dead, and the second one has to do with the sun. So, sunscreen. And it's even orange packaging, so a two for one. This is the Vichy. This is their 60 SPF, very nice. Um, the Anti-Shine Dry Touch UV Lotion designed for oily skin, which is not my skin type, but you know what? Sunscreen, let's just get it used up. It's a small little sample, and Willow has, once again, chewed on a box. She has not chewed on the product, though, so it's, it's relatively okay, I suppose. Tiny little sunscreen right in here. And again, I am kind of focusing on this sunscreen as well, or wanting to, because it does expire in January. So summertime is now. This is the time especially to use it. We'll get an opinion. And again, it is small. There's only three milliliters, so I can get that knocked out pretty quickly. The next one is very special to me, the Disney Princess Project, because I actually did that one on my own last year before I started my YouTube channel. Um, and I did a whole bunch of usage goals with that particular project. Obviously, you have a whole bunch of different Disney princesses. They are associated with two colors, and you pick an item based on one of those colors. Um, for me, I had to pick Belle because according to every Disney princess quiz I have ever done between the brown hair and my love of reading, that got me Belle absolutely every single time. Belle's colors are yellow or white, and I've picked an item that you have seen before that has both of those colors in there. And that, of course, is this Nina fragrance. You saw me roll this into deck of padding, and I love it. I love it. Um, packaging might be a little bit more Snow White, so that's okay. Um, it kind of fits the Disney Princess vibe a little bit here. Um, obviously, this is like a full-size fragrance. It is like way up to here, and although I love it, I am not ready to pan a full-size fragrance yet. So again, usage, 30 uses on this wonderful fragrance. Drop 10 by Summer, that is a project that I have done, and I did drop all 10 of my items by Summer for the finale. Obviously, you have to pick Summer-themed projects, and I picked something that, um, I'm very bad at using, but I need that push, right? I need some accountability, so I actually do it, but the problem is I also can't see through this packaging, so I can't mark it. Ugh, frustrating. The summer theme item I have chosen is this 
Nair Leg Mask. So what it does, it has 100% natural clay and seaweed. It is supposed to help remove your, like your hair, um, so you don't have to shave. Um, so it gently removes hair and stubble. It also is going to moisturize the legs. That's the whole mask element here. But it, I find, and like, don't get me wrong, like I shave for myself. I don't shave for anyone else. And of course, summer is especially the time when people tend to do their shaving if they're choosing to do it. Now, my problem with this is you have to smooth this mask onto wherever you want to have this hair removed. It is not for your more sensitive area. So again, you know, legs, people, be careful. Um, you're supposed to not rub it in, which is difficult when, as you can see, there's a lot of use there. Like it is a very, it's got an intensive smell. It's not the best smelling there thing, but it is, can I get some out without too much? Like it's very thick and like you have to kind of smooth it because otherwise you're using way too much. It's, it's a delicate balance there. Um, so you're supposed to leave on a thick, even layer, which means you have to kind of rub it without rubbing it in Oh, challenging. And then you have to leave this mask on for at least five to 10 minutes. Don't exceed the 10 minutes. That is their recommendation. I've probably broken that rule a few times, but, and then you rinse it off thoroughly. So how I tend to use this when I use it, and it's been open for quite a while, um, I will put this on my legs, wait for 10 minutes, and then try to go hop in the shower. But while this is on, like you can't sit on anything. Um, you know, it's all over your legs. So anywhere you want, it has to be uncovered. So it's, it's a hassle and it, it does work as long as you get enough of the product on without rubbing it in. So that for me, that means a lot of it is patchy, which means you have to touch it up after and it's just, so I won't repurchase, but I need to get this done. It's the very long moral of the story. And that's why this is being rolled into the project. Um, obviously with it being still summertime, this is prime time to get some use out of it. I don't know how much I'll get use out of the winter, but I want to get this guy done, get it gone. Next up is the Golden Girls, which, you know, it's about the Golden Girls, and I've never watched the show, I've never really been interested in the show, so mm, this one, again, I did pick an, the prompt based on the prompt description, so we're going with Sophia for this one, a sample-sized product, and so I'm going with a very tiny sample size of the Neostrata. This is another moisturizer. This is the Restore pH Daily Moisturizer, two milliliter sample in here. And we'll just get it knocked out really quick. Happy hour. Um, I don't drink alcoholic beverages. I've tried a couple here or there, but this doesn't appeal to me personally. Uh, so the prompt I associated with this one was Last Call, which is an item that is almost finished in your collection. And for me, that's this guy from Clarins. You can see that line of product already. Uh, this is their Fix Makeup, um, what is this? Long lasting makeup hold that hydrates, refreshes, and soothes. And as you guys can see, that's my line right there. So not a whole lot. Um, I was using this up until Graveyard Project Pound started when I rolled in a setting spray into that project. While that project is ongoing, I obviously I'm focusing on the other setting spray, but once that project is done, more likely done rather than finishing up the item, then I'll probably focus on this guy here. So if I finish the other spray earlier, then I'll just start rolling on this one. Obviously it's not gonna take that long. Now I mentioned earlier, I'm a 90s baby. So we have I Heart the 90s. So we get a whole bunch of different prompts associated with the 90s. Some of those definitely nostalgic. And one of the ones um, that was nostalgic that I picked for this project was Got Milk, because that was a big thing, especially around like grade two, I feel like it was. Got Milk, and I drank a lot of milk as a kid, and as a result, I drink a lot of chocolate milk now. Uh, that prompt is associated with white product or packaging, and the cream blush saga continues with this white packaging. This is the Fenty Cheeks Out 
uh, Freestyle Cream Blush in the shade Summertime Wine. It came in a Sephora favorite kit. And like with the other blush, the goal is to hit pan, and that is where I am starting with it. This is the blush I am currently using as my cream blush, so I am wearing it today under my powders from the Physician's Formula Butter Palette, and this is going to be the main one I'm going to be focused on until Graveyard Project ends, and then depending on what I'm using, right? So if I'm using a different highlighter, then I'll use this one. If I'm using the duo, I'll use the duo. So again, two cream blushes I want to hit pan on, and I've got a bit of a a start, a bit of a dip happening in there. Hard to tell how deep these pans go, but we'll get there. It's panning cats and dogs. So for all of the loving of your dogs and your cats out there, um, that's the project I have recently joined. So I do have an intro and a first update up for that one. So for me, it's going to be a very small project, only four months in length, since it does also end in October. Um, this one, the prompt I picked was the Corgi. Um, the Corgi is a dog that my sister really likes, is considering potentially getting. So I I picked this one for you if you're watching. The Corgi, of course, they're famous for their wiggly tails. Those butts just go. So we're looking for something that jiggles. And so for me, we're doing a mask. Uh, this is the Peter Thomas Roth. This is their, what is this? Water Drench Hyaluronic Cloud Mask Hydrating Gel. And as you guys can see, I do have a bit of a line going on this already. I have started using it. Very exciting. This will track via video because that's going to be easier to do than the, the lines just because, again, it can be kind of inconsistent. And because it's a gel, there's a little bit of jiggly with this one. So that's what I'm rolling in for the Corgi. Because, again, cute dogs. What dogs are cute. All dogs are cute. But Corgis are also cute. And so this is the product I've rolled in. Next project is lip service, which I am doing, and I'm using so many lip products up. I do have colored lip products coming up not too far away here. So I actually am choosing a lip product, which any lip product will do, that I think if I put it in a project will help me actually use it. And that is this little guy from Nivea. It is not a chapstick, though. Or it's not just a lip balm. This is one of their exfoliating lip products products. So very gentle exfoliation. That's what I have left in there. Um, I prefer my lip scrubs to be like in a pot that I can use in the shower to like really scrub things off. This does an okay job, but I do want to get this guy also finished. The Monochromatic Project Pan has a whole bunch of different months and those months have colors associated with it. I picked May because May is my birthday, and May is associated with a red product. And um, as you guys know, and this is pan to say, I finally finished my little mini red lipstick that took me seven months to work through. So uh, let's do it again. <laughs> let's do it again to myself. This time again, another mini red lipstick I got in one of the Sephora favorite kits. This one coming from YSL. So absolutely gorgeous packaging. This is their oh, tiny fonts. So oh, I'll just, I'll put it up so you guys can see it. This one, very bright red. I haven't even touched this yet. So of course, if I end up hating the formula or the color or something, I'll just declutter. But that it's all the product that's in here. It's a little bit thinner of a tube there, but I'm thinking that's a little bit more true red, so maybe I'll like this color a little bit better because the Tom Ford was more of an orangey red. So I am kind of excited to bring it in, but let's see how long it takes me to pan. Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, the Halloween ones, uh, I talked a little bit about this in my most recent beauty haul. Halloween has never been a big deal for myself or my family because it's my mom's birthday, so that's always been the priority. I don't like scary, I don't like gory, um, so I don't do a lot of the Halloween or spooky theme projects. In fact, I don't do any at all. Um, and even within my realm of fantasy, right, I don't like the horror sub-genre category out of it. Gothic is about as far as I'll go with gothic narratives. Um, Nightmare Before Christmas as a movie, though, uh, 
<laughs> That's my controversial take on it. It's fine. It's there. It's not a favorite. It's not a big nostalgic movie for me. I've seen it maybe once or twice. It's there. Um, but there's a whole bunch of different props of sorts with, with this. Some of them are towards Halloween and some towards Christmas. Kind of doing both of those big seasons. So I picked a prompt that is an item that reminds you of Christmas. And so for me, I'm thinking Christmas colors because I don't want to be wearing a whole bunch of like Christmas things outside of the Christmas season because again, I like my Christmas, but in December, I'm one of those people. Um, so Christmas colors, red, green, and silver. So all of that to finally get down to this guy here from House Laboratories. I do have one of these in Graveyard Project Pan in Aphrodite, which is more of like a champagne color. This one is silver and this one is in the shade Flash. This one came to me in BoxyCharm. I didn't get to pick this one here and it's decent. I do prefer Aphrodite as a color, but I think this would be great for, you know, quick makeup days for work. And so I'm hoping to get this one done, especially because it is getting older. It's been open for a little while. So I want to go ahead and get this guy used up as well. On the same roll of Halloween-y type things, uh, Nightmare on Panic Street. I am not a horror movie person at all. Like, ugh. Um, but what I picked on Nightmare on Panning Street, uh, which is related to a whole bunch of different classic Halloween movies, I picked Dracula because Dracula, you know, that falls more into fantasy a little bit more. That's a classic in literature. I studied it a couple different times over the course of my degrees. Uh, I have an English degree, a couple of them. Um, so I went with Dracula for that reason, and the prompt associated with that is a product that sucks the life out of you. Now, that was kind of difficult to do, so I sort of modified it in the sense of a product that sucks stuff out of you. Not the life out of you, but takes all the things you don't want. And so for that, it's a charcoal mask. And if the charcoal mask is still in the box because it has not been used yet. This is one that I've gone through probably three of these bottles previously. This is the Mary Kay Clear Proof Deep Cleansing Charcoal Mask. <sighs> Again, kind of conflicted in terms of the brand here, but this product is fantastic. It, it has peppermint in there, so it does have a bit of that fresh, clean scent in there. 114 grams of mask here. Um, thin layer over your skin. It dries down. You can see based on the dry down, if it dries down darker, you know, it's pulling some of that stuff out of your skin. And then you just wash it off. And it's really easy to remove. So about 10 to 20 minutes for your mask. And this is my favorite charcoal mask and it's going to fill the prompt of Dracula. Now, um, I do have the little glam glow charcoal kind of mask in advent calendar and i also have a small coddly one it's like their detox pink clay mask that i've been working on behind the scenes so once those two are done i'll bring this one into my routine and generally i'm using a charcoal mask twice a week for the last of the halloween projects we have paranormal pantivity i have seen the paranormal activity movies and um, you know they're not scary when you watch it. They're scary later on, though. So, um, what I picked from that is the black dog because you know black dogs aren't necessarily Halloween. They're cute. My dog Anya, who's a Rottweiler lab mix, is mainly black. Um, and the black dog, of course, is an animal-themed product. And this is bringing in my second mascara because of the packaging, right? This is the tart, the man eater. Hence why the animal print, I suppose. Um, I will open this because this is the mascara I am using now. Uh, I am wearing it today, so you can kind of see it in action. Got a very interesting brush on there. And the reason besides the packaging, and especially why I'm doing this one rather than the Benefit one, I think this is the oldest mascara in my collection. Um, I think this was the very first BoxyCharm mascara I received. 
which is quite a while ago. So I need to get going on it, which is why I am using this one first. And I'm glad it fit into this project. Um, once I finished the mascara I had, and this is Pantasy, so the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise, I have started using this one. So I have been using it for a couple weeks now, but we'll start tracking it from the start of this project. Same pan last year. So so is there with a whole bunch of different holidays. So I went for one of the more holiday specific prompts of the present, which is obviously something that you got as a present, uh, which is this. Um, now this sample didn't just come as this sample. It came in one of the Sephora favorite kits, which I often ask for for birthday and Christmas. This item comes from uh, Shani Darden. This is their cleansing serum, which is a cleanser. Just it's a very liquidy kind of cleanser. Um, I picked this because it fits the prompt, but I also picked this because I am annoyed with this brand. Because as you know from my It's Panning Cats and Dogs project, I was working on their retinal sample, which although had a pump, didn't have a straw attached to the pump. So there was no way to get the product out besides taking the packaging apart and because of the hard plastic component you had to scrape in with a little little tiny little like a skincare spatula to try to get it out so i'm annoyed this is the last thing i have from that brand so hopefully this redeems the brand optimistic viewpoint otherwise i want it out of my collection it is full up to here as with a lot of little squeezy tubes so um this one probably won't get a little bit of use until after i have finished my youth to the people little sample of like the kale spinach green tea superfood cleanser because that's rolled in for beauty a to z but then once that one is done i'll be able to alternate this one with the one that is in skin is in which is my glam glow charcoal cleanser because i don't like to always use the charcoal one so this will be a nice alternative, hopefully. Next up is an eyeshadow focused project. And of course you guys do know I am doing my own take on an eyeshadow project of uh, my use that eyeshadow, rolling in a random shade, using it 10 times, three eyeshadows in at a time. Size matters. Um, with this one, we're dealing with something that is big, it is bulky, or it is an awkward palette in some way. So the one I have picked, which I have not used this palette before, so this is great because then I get to experiment, try it, see if I like it, comes to us from Profusion. I've heard, I have heard very good things about their eyeshadows, but I've never seen this kind of packaging, which is kind of big, kind of bulky, kind of awkward, and like, how are you supposed to get eyeshadow brushes in these corners? That's, that's the question. Um, a very nice neutral palette, so, I'm probably gonna start using this one more in September, you know, normal back to regularly scheduled programming. Like my eyeshadow usage project, the goal is 10 uses on it, but of course there is no particular shade I'm focused on. So just 10 cohesive eye looks from this palette, unless I decide to declutter. Skin is in, which is a project I am doing right now. I've been working through lots of skincare, and of course, anything that is for your skin, whether it is your face or your body, is fair game for this project. What I have chosen to bring in for this is another of the Peter Thomas Roth little masks. Um, I did buy a set of four of these. They were on like a pretty good deal at Sephora quite a while ago, and then I haven't been using them, so I'm using this project to actually get the ball rolling. So there are still two others not rolled into a project. Going back to kind of that 50 shades of yellow or gold theme, this is the 24 karat gold pure luxury lift and firming mask. I have not used this one yet. So it's, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be an adventure. Um, hopefully I like, it. oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Hopefully I like it. Uh, let's get that a little closer for you. Like that's thick. I don't know what that scent is, but there's a lot of product in here to play with. Um, the other one's taking me quite a while to go through, so I imagine this one's gonna be pretty similar. And you're supposed to use this one two to three times a week. This is probably gonna get used one to two times a week. Again, it kind of depends on what mask I have in my rotation at a time where my focus is. And I tend to alternate between my treatment and my hydrating mask. This next item also could have been for Skin Is In, but we're going with That's Expensive, which is 
an expensive item. And again, this is relative. So what's expensive to one person may not be expensive to another. And I have picked a very expensive brand and I have also not used this product yet. And I need to get going on these masks. I recently in Skin is In used up a moisturizer from Strivectin, which is a very expensive brand. And I knew that before I used it up, but uh, ooh, getting that empties number was a uh, oh. And I haven't looked at this one yet, but it's gonna be a big price tag. This is the Strivectin. This is their multi-action cloudberry moisture plumping cream mask. And it's still in the box because I tend to keep my items in the boxes till I'm ready to use them. It has cloudberry, prickly pear, and hyaluronic acid. Now, the prickly pear in the pharmacy scrub, I did not like the scent of that. So hopefully this one smells better. But yeah, it's supposed to be boosting radiance, soften the looks of lines, hydrate the skin, plump the skin with moisture. Um, so it's supposed to do a lot. Here's a tub. That's a pretty large looking tub. 15 to 20 minute mask, used two to three times a week. Again, probably gonna be used once or twice. We'll kind of see what my skin needs, what I like with all of this stuff here. All right, let's take a look in here. Oh, okay. I wasn't expecting that color. <laughs> that is orange, but that's a lot of mask. How much, how much mask is this? This is 70 milliliters. That's a lot in there. For comparison, Peter Thomas Roth, we have 50 milliliters. So I guess it isn't that much bigger, but awesome. Okay, so this is gonna be a mask. I have not used it before, so uh, we'll play. And it, that's expensive, so let's make sure we use it well and use it up. Next up, that's so 2000. So another decade focused project pan. Um, a lot of memories from the 2000s. And so the prompt I picked to go with this one is YouTube, which uh, for me isn't a 2000s thing at all. It's really much more recent than that for me, my use of it. And really watching YouTube was a uh, a COVID thing for me. That's when my YouTube journey really kind of began. Um, YouTube, of course, is associated with a YouTube recommendation. And um, this is my other blush, you guys. So this is the Burt's Bees Blush in Toasted Cinnamon. Um, looks like this. And based on just me telling you that you probably know who talked about this blush and was raved about it. Um, Burt's Bees blushes in general, right? Kelly Yush has talked a lot about other colors, but Toasted Cinnamon in particular was a Kathleen Light's recommendation. And I bought it because of her. So it does fall out of the pan, which isn't particularly great, especially because I haven't used it very much. I've used, again, this is my problem with blushes, like I had in this is Pantasy. I'll use it a couple times, be like, yeah, I like that. But because I'm not using them more extensively, like, do I actually really like this? Like, is this gonna be probably too deep for me? It was for Kelly, so I guess we'll find out. So 30 uses is gonna be the goal on this one, because we're not even gonna try to hit pan. I haven't used this nearly enough to try to do that yet. 30 uses or declutter, right? That's kind of gonna be the goal. See if I wanna keep this in my collection. This is Pantasy. That is one of the projects I joined right away when I started my channel, even though, of course, I'm starting them late. Um, and, of course, I picked my favorite fantasy race slash creature, which is the elf. Um, an elf is associated with a product that makes you feel beautiful. And so I have chosen to go with my NARS Orgasm Blush, the NARS Orgasm Lip Gloss which I've worn once just to make sure I liked it, and I did, and it's just a small one. Like, this is obviously the mini size, lots of that sparkle in there. I wanna use it up, but I'm gonna enjoy it. Tiny Pans, again, another eyeshadow related project, something that is a smaller pan size. So I'm gonna go with the Maybelline The Matte Bar. Um, Cause as you guys can see, um, these are narrow little eyeshadow pans. Now the focus on this is gonna be actually 
different than all of my other eyeshadow projects. Because I want you guys to focus on this shade, the pink in Empire. As you can probably tell, there's some really good use on that particular shade. There's also some in this one here in Groundbreaker. But this shade in Empire, um, for those of you who are familiar with my Partners in Cream project, I have a the Maybelline Tattoo Cream Eyeshadow in Socialite, which is a beautiful pink. This is the color I wear in my crease. So I'm always pairing these two, or most of the time I am pairing those two together. So what I want to do, and I'm, I'm making some progress, but I want to hit pan. Again, I'm using those two things together, so hopefully that will happen. Turn and Burn, uh, a project I would like to join, just uh, I don't want to conflict with skin is in. Uh, turn and Burn is all about let's move things out, get through things quickly. So of course we're going to go with a very quick Turn and Burn item, another foil packet, because that's only going to be a couple uses. This comes to us from Vichy from their Mineral 89. This is their Repairing Eye Fortifier, which I think is just a fancy way of saying eye serum. So uh, let's get this used up. Turn and burn it real quick. Women Who Rock. We have a whole bunch of famous women throughout time, and they have all of their props associated with them. I picked Marie Curie, right? Woman of science, got to support women in trades and technologies. And so her prompt that's associated with that is a product newly discovered. And what I've chosen to go with that is actually a product category. Um, I haven't been into perfumes until fairly recently. I started getting into them. And so fragrance as an entire category is my newly pro newly discovered product. So it's not a specific like, I just discovered this thing that I love. It's a category in general. And I have been using through projects a bunch of these small little sample sizes or doing uses on perfumes and other projects. But before I try to pan the big stuff, let's go with something kind of mid-ranged. This is from Mary Kay. This is in Live Fearlessly. Uh, Live Fearlessly is supposed to be inspired by the courageous women around the world, so it does very much fit this project. And according to their website, it has notes of energizing ginger, bold rose, and warm roasted tonka bean, which is okay. I This came in a trio of three fragrances, and they're just all okay. I don't think I would have bought the set if I got to smell it first, but I was, I was wanting fragrances. I always wanted to try fragrances. And what's interesting about this fragrance and this tends to be true with a lot of Mary Kay products. Their fragrances are lighter. Like they're not a Bath and Body Works where it's this very intensive fragrance in there that you just kind of melt in and enjoy. And so for a lot of fragrances, I spray once, maybe twice in the morning. Maybe I'll spray it again in the evening if I'm going out. Maybe. It depends on the fragrance. This one... I can spray this multiple times a day on me. Like, again, do like one or two spritz at a time because I'm sensitive to some scents and some scents can give headaches. But um, I think I can move through this one a little bit faster because it doesn't last as long. This is where I'm starting with. Obviously, there's still a fair way to go with it. Yeah, there's the lineup right there for us. This has 7.5 milliliters, so we'll see. But I'd like to get these knocked out of the collection. And finally, last one is the Zodiac Panner. Um, I'm a Gemini, so had to obviously pick that prompt. Uh, and the Gemini, once again, a yellow product. Yeah, 50 shades of yellow gold. Here I am, almost, kind of. There's a lot of yellow gold on this table. Um, so what I've picked is another lip product. But I've picked a lip balm. Obviously, you can see the yellow from here. This is the Burt's Bees Strawberry Lip Balm, um, just their moisturizing one, and uh, you, you've seen these before. I do like it. I hadn't gotten much use out of it, and then uh, I, I was like, I'm going to roll this as a project. I've used it a little bit since then, and I also want to get this guy done. And that, finally, is all 
30 of the prompts the projects associated with the items I've rolled in, the goals associated with them, kind of some behind the scenes sneak piece of when I want to use these things. So before we conclude this very long video, again, thank you if you are still here. Let's talk about some goals. Obviously, I want to be integrating as much of these things into my everyday routine as much as possible. I do want to balance them across my other projects, but we're going to go with the low hanging fruit these three items right here I want to have done for the next update. So I do have some empties and can roll some stuff out. Obviously this is from Day of the Dead. So of course it's only half. So I'll still have the other half of the prompt in here. But the Vichy sunscreen I want to have done. The Vichy eye boost serum. And of course the Neostrata moisturizer. So that way I can have Two and a half prompts rolled out for the first update. Again, these updates are going to be monthly, so stay tuned. Every month I'll let you know if I haven't touched the item, um, if the progress I have on it, if it's makeup, I'll track the uses on there as well. And we'll go. We'll see how much I'm able to do over the course of this year. But that is finally where I'll leave it for today. Thank you so much for joining me for this very long video and especially if you're still here at the end you're the real MVP for this so we'll see how we do I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video very soon and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day